In this episode, we're going to check some quarries for zeolites, an obscure aluminum silicate that forms in the crooks and crannies of pillow basalts. We once found a nice squid eye specimen near the Queenstone and Wangdoodle claims at Marsing, Idaho, but today we're camping at Potlatch State Park and exploring the southeast corner of the Olympic Peninsula near Shelton, Washington. We're going to check out the Robertson Pit and the Lucky Strike Pit, and then we're going to the famed Rice Museum to meet curator Rudy Chernich, the man who wrote Zeolites of the World. Here's part of the bibliography if you want to follow along at home. Instead of driving all the way to Olympia and taking a right, the best way to get across the Puget Sound to Highway 101 is by ferry. There are lots of different options to cross from the Seattle area to the Olympic Peninsula. You can even get a great view of the Olympics in the bargain some days. Welcome to Garrett's World of Geology. This is our sixth edition. We are up at Robertson's Pit outside of Shelton, Washington, and we're going to dig some zeolites. Actually, we're going to pound them out of the wall. It's going to take uh, sledgehammers and chisels. It's a hard hat area. I'm ready. But let's see, this is the crescent formation, which is underwater basalts that come up in pillows, and then they'll have vugs or cavities, and that's where the zeolite crystals grow in there. There'll be sprays, needles. So let's go find some zeolites. <laughs> Here's an example of some zeolites. You can see the needle crystals growing out. They tend to get brown really fast as soon as they're into the rain and the weather. So these are still real fresh. So zeolite hunting is a real side shoot of even collecting minerals because you have to really be a good mineralogist to identify some of these. There's about 40 different varieties, I think, of zeolites. There's probably even more that have been made in the lab. Some zeolites are used for kitty litter because they have a ring structure that will absorb odors and contaminants. Next, I wanted to talk with Rudy Chernich, the curator at the Rice Museum in Hillsboro, Oregon. This used to be a nice suburban ranch dwelling, home of Richard and Helen Rice, a pair of famous rock hounds. Eventually, the 20,000 specimen rock collection took over the home. As far as I know, it houses the best collection of zeolites in the world, many donated by Rudy himself. So how are zeolites formed? They're formed from hydrothermal water. It's hot water that comes deep from the earth. It's dissolved chemicals out of the rock, comes up and wherever there's a hole, uh, it'll deposit crystals lining the cavities, usually at fairly low temperatures. And if the composition has some silica, aluminum, uh, calcium, sodium, that's all the ingredients you need to make a zeolite. So tell me about when you found your, your famous mineral. Well, I found four uh, minerals in that same locality at Gogol, Oregon. Uh, the first one uh, we named Colzite. And when I was digging there uh, looking for additional specimens, we ran across some things we didn't know what they were. And unfortunately, you tend to pigeonhole them into uh, categories that you think you know what it is. And I call this an unusual form of apophyllite. And for 10 years, it sit in a drawer in my, dis in my display, uh, labeled that. Later, we were studying this material and found out it didn't have any cleavage. It didn't break like apophyllite should. So I gave it to someone to x-ray it, to find out what it is, and it turned out to be a new species. And eventually, that was named after me for the work that I've done on, on, uh, on zeolites. Okay, so tell me about the Robertson's Pit. The most uh, abundant mineral at the Robertson Pit is uh, naturalite. It forms thin white needles. Uh, the, the other zeolites that are found there uh, mainly is analcine. Also calcite is found and a few little micro minerals. But uh, naturalite is uh, the most abundant. It was first found by Rayless Manis, the state geologist, and for years he kept it as a secret spot to collect uh, material. Ah, but now it's late, open. Later he published a report on it and is well known by everybody. 
About a half hour away, we visited a second pit near the Camilche Casino. We parked at the west end of the lot, crossed the highway, and started hiking. On the way, we met author Tate Wilson, who wrote this locale up for Rock and Gem magazine. He was keeping some fresh material wet with damp moss. Okay, this is the Lucky Strike Quarry. We've got more zeolites here. Interesting coincidence, just as we were coming up, we met the author of the article in Rock and Gem. I think it's, yeah, Tate was his name. Anyway, so we're at the, we're at a second zeolite pit. This is right by the casino at Camilchi, and um, pretty easy access compared to Robertson's Pit. It's, it's just like a five, 10 minute walk up the hill from the casino parking lot. The next time you see white streaks in a basalt outcrop, don't just assume it's calcite or quartz. It might be a zeolite. Collecting these ringed silicates is fun and easy if you're not afraid to look through a hand lens or a microscope. And who knows, you might discover a completely new mineral and lend your name to science. It's a lot more likely with this mineral family than most others. If you need more information, download Rudy's Opus, Zeolites of the World, or stop by the Rice Museum. There's also a group called Northwest Micromounters that can help you out. And one last note of caution, rock pits may be active, so stick to visiting on the weekends, be safe, and don't mess with the equipment. Yeah, shake your wang doodle. Go.